Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and in today's video, we will be talking about the top mistakes that tourists make when they come to Switzerland. If you're new to the channel, my name is Oli. I've been living in Switzerland for the past four years, but I'm originally from Singapore and this channel is all about sharing with you life and travels in Switzerland. And without further ado, let's get going. This common mistake is to not budget well for the trip. If you have watched my grocery shopping video, you would know that Switzerland is a costly place to live and even more so when it comes to travel. You can expect average hotel prices to range from 180 to more than 200 a night and even if you were to eat at a typical fast food restaurant say mcdonald's it can start anywhere from 15 francs so it is really quite expensive and if you did not set a daily budget well in advance it can cost you even more so in the long run the realistic daily cost for a solo traveler should be no lesser than 200 francs and for a family of four you should expect to budget no less than 500 swiss francs a day the second most common mistake is to not bring Swiss francs on your trip. Switzerland is not a member of the European Union and unlike bordering countries, it does not use the euro. Although the euro is widely accepted all over the country, if you were to use the euro, you would end up with unfavorable exchange rates at restaurants and kiosks and you would just end up losing money. There are two great apps that I really recommend for travelers. The first one is called Utrip and the second, which I use myself personally, is called Revolut. Essentially, these are apps that work also as multi-currency travel wallets you can top up with any currencies that you want uh, using your existing bank account or credit or debit card and they also they provide favorable exchange rates better than the ones that if you were to pay with swiss francs directly at the shops and restaurants so far i have no issues using it in switzerland so this is definitely a good choice to have so you don't end up with uh, the issue the problem of not having swiss francs with you third mistake is expecting to shop on sundays where i come from uh, in singapore sundays are like the day where you go out you go do your shopping you go meet friends but no that is not the case in switzerland in fact sunday is uh, day for rest and everything is closed perhaps except for churches maybe and Saturday if you were to go out you will find that it's as though the whole of Switzerland is outside because they are planning their weekly grocery shopping before the shops close on Sundays so it's especially packed on Saturdays if you were to go for, for to the supermarket and because of this it is important for you to plan ahead so you know that Sundays the, the shops and the restaurants are all going to be closed so it's better for you to just prepare for what you need you need for your food in advance on Saturday so you don't end up with nothing when it comes to the day where everything is closed. The next mistake would be to eat out too often in Switzerland. Why do I say so? Personally, for me, food is very important when it comes to traveling. I want to be sampling the local food. I want to be eating out and dining at fancy restaurants. But if you were to do it every single day for every single meal, trust me, your budget is going to explode. You'll be spending tons of money. So it's not very practical if you were to be here in Switzerland for like 10 days. So a good option is to choose certain days to dine in, which is uh, to maybe buy some stuff from the supermarket and if you were to stay in an Airbnb, chances are you will be able to cook at your apartment. Fifth mistake would be to travel without a right travel pass. I would say that transportation would be one of your highest expenses in Switzerland and travel costs may add up easily if you don't have the right travel passes. Take for example, a, a trip from Zurich to Geneva, if you do not have any travel passes, it will cost you 80 Swiss francs per person. That's just insane. But if you were to have a half bag card, for example, the amount is automatically cut, into, cut by half. And if you were to have a Swiss travel pass, it covers all of your transportation costs for buses, for boats, for trains. And it also includes discounted admissions to museums and attractions, and also discounted prices for cable cars and special mountain excursions. I will not be covering the full details in this video, but if you need help with choosing the right travel pass, say the halfback card or the Swiss travel pass, do check out my blog post down below where I give a very detailed comparison guide on which travel pass would be suitable for your trip. If you have reached this part of the video and you found my information shared here helpful, do consider subscribing to the channel. It would help me out so much and I will appreciate it a lot. Let's get back into the video. The next mistake would be to not travel by train. I don't even know why people think about 
not using the train as a mode of transportation because you're in a country where trains are the best mode of transportation in the world. It's fast, it's efficient, it's clean and it gets you by anywhere with so good connections. You don't even have to stress about driving on the roads. Um, so to me, I would have choose train transportation without a doubt. But I do understand that for some travellers, especially those with elderly or children, it might be more practical to have a car because that way it's more flexible. But on the other hand, you also have to consider other costs related to renting a car. For example, the rental costs, uh, the parking and also the street traffic rules, which to me kind of adds to the stress of travelling. So in general, I don't recommend using a car when you're in Switzerland. The train is a much safer and just generally a more fast free option in my opinion. The next mistake is for those of you that are thinking of driving in Switzerland and that is to exceed the speed limit. Now, although generally in all countries it's best advised to stick and abide by the traffic regulations, but Switzerland is one country where you really need to be especially wary of uh, the traffic regulations because the fines are hefty here. The roads are not especially slow, so it's about 50 km in built areas and the limit is up to 120 km when you're on expressways. The fine would depend on how much you've exceed by the limit as well as the specific offence. If you were to exceed the limit in built areas by say 10 kilometers, you can expect to pay a fine of 60 to 80 francs for example and if you were to exceed the, uh, the limit on expressways, you would expect a fine of 120 francs on the spot. And if you think that you can skip the fine and not pay and just return back to your country, no, they are going to send the fine back to you in Singapore or wherever you are. You just can't run away from it. So this is you know, just something to keep in mind if you're driving a car in Switzerland that just abide by the speed limit. Don't speed because once you get a fine, it's just going to ruin your trip. The next mistake is a tech mistake and that is to not bring the right travel adapters before coming to Switzerland. I don't think a lot of people know but Switzerland use, uses a specific plug which is the plug, the type J plug. This is used in Switzerland and Liechtenstein. So if you were to bring like the Euro plug which typically looks like this, it's a two pin and it's much more rounded as you can see whereas the one in Switzerland, it's a diamond uh, shape flush and it's a three pin. If you bring this, nope, it can't fit because it's too round and fat. But instead, if you were to use this one, which I think is a type C plug used in France or something, I think, this one is able to fit. So either you bring this or you bring you buy the specific three pin plug. But usually what I would do is to just bring one single um, adapter that can fit. Then I would uh, also bring along an extension cord. That way I only need one single uh, plug attached to this and then I can just use all of my Singapore appliances. So best way is to just bring a set like this so that way you'll be safe. Another mistake in my opinion is for travellers to not spend enough time in Switzerland. What I mean by that is a lot of times people would want to pack their Swiss trip together to visit other countries or in Europe like to France or Italy. This is very common but in my opinion it's not a good idea because Switzerland itself although it's small but there are so many attractions, so many places to see. For example, there's Zurich, there's Lucerne, there's Lausanne, there's Lauterbrunnen, there's Grindelwald. There's just so many and it's not possible for you to pack every single thing in a short time frame, say three to five days. You will end up missing out a lot and I don't think it's a worthwhile investment, especially if you would already come this far to Switzerland. In my opinion, it would be better if you were to stay minimally seven days, but the best would be two weeks because then you really get to explore each region in, in, in detail. And there are also some very unique parts of Switzerland Switzerland that most people have not been to, say down south in Ticino, the Italian side, it's really very beautiful. During summer, I really love Lugano and Ascona and you should definitely check out my summer video in Ticino. So these are just examples, places in Switzerland that not a lot of people go to because they don't have enough time to, to begin with in the first place. So this is a typical mistake that I would avoid if I were to come to Switzerland and I will try to spend more time and to just dedicate a full week, at least a full week in Switzerland. The next mistake is very common and that is for travellers to go to Interlaken. To me, that's like in Singapore and then you only go to Marina Bay Sands. I don't think you have seen the whole of Singapore in that, in that way. So Interlaken to me is a very touristy place. It's, and I don't know why it's so popular because to me there's nothing much to do there apart from paragliding or maybe how to go. But really, that's about it. I feel that you can spend your time much more worthwhile in Switzerland by going out to other places like Grindelwald or Lucerne or anything. Just not Interlaken because 
um, maybe it's because it's a good base for you to go out to the the Bernese uh, overland but I don't think you should spend more than half a day in Interlaken. You should definitely get out of it, get out of the space because it's quite boring, to be honest. Final mistake is to not use basic local language. In Switzerland, there is no official Swiss language. Instead, in different parts of the region, some may speak French, some may speak German or Italian, but uh, German and French are the most common languages. And it would definitely help a lot in your trip if you were to master just some basic phrases like bonjour, Bonsoir, s'il vous plaît, or merci, which means good morning, good afternoon, please, and thank you. And in German, if you were to know simple phrases like Gutzi, Dankeschön, or bitte, of course, the locals are not going to expect you to be speaking fluently in German or French, but if you were to just use these simple phrases in your request, they are definitely going to appreciate it, and chances are you are going to receive better service from the local staff. So definitely consider using local languages in your conversations. And and there you have it, my top 10 tourist mistakes that people make in Switzerland. I hope you found this information helpful and so you do not repeat them yourself when you're planning for your trip to Switzerland. And if you happen to be planning for a winter holiday to Switzerland, you want to check out this video here where I give you tips and recommendations on what to pack for a winter trip. Let me know down in the comments if you have any suggestions on what are the topics that you would like to see. And if not, stay tuned and I will see you in my next video. Bye!